you have reached the Snail Trail 4x4 podcast voicemail. If you want to leave some feedback about Toyotas, have questions about Toyotas, maybe poke some fun at Toyotas, or let us know how your JL came with a Starbucks membership, then leave it all on the line, and we'll get to it on the podcast. Keep crawling. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Snail Mail, the portion of the podcast where you guys talk to us. It's like a role reversal. Kind if of. We're doing role playing. Yeah. Are you into role playing, Jimmy? Of course. Yeah. I love Halloween. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Do you ever dress up as like, oh, let's say a bear? And uh, <laughs> I just take my shirt off. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Why don't you show everybody <laughs> yeah. the fine folks on the camera today? <laughs> oh man. Um, yeah. Friday episode today. Welcome everybody. Uh, we're here and we get to listen to some voicemails from you guys. We have 16. Woo. We jumped back up in a week. Since yeah. We, we missed a week. We, we missed a week and we're fucked again. So I don't know. We're back down to uh, last week of September. First week of October is going to be the ones we'll be going over today. Okay. So we're about roughly two weeks behind. Yeah, maybe two three. to three. Yeah, yeah. Two, three ish. So shall we jump right in? Yeah, might as well. But if you guys want to call in, you want to be a part of this segment, make sure to call us 916-345. Wait, 916-345-4744. That's it. I had to think there for a second. Whoa. Ooh, it hurts. dangerous. Yeah, really, be careful. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> got lightheaded. Yeah. But yeah, call in. You can be a part of this just like this one here. Me? No, you're supposed to hit play. Oh. Hit play. Just push play. Fucking A. All right. First one. Austin from Washington State. Not Ooh. irate Austin. Okay. It's a new Austin. What up, Jimmy and Tyler? This is Austin from Washington State. I am pnw.crawler on IG. You guys were talking about hydro assist and proper power steering setups and my uh, my eyes lit up. This is something I have dove deep into the rabbit hole, and I wanted to Perfect. provide some information that I've learned. Sorry, if I sound out of breath, I'm up on the roof cleaning the gutters and figured I'd take a break. Um, I'm not going to, the best time to call you safe. what exactly <laughs> is wrong with Jimmy's power steering system. Um, the gist of it is it doesn't sound like it was set up correctly from the start just because things weren't available at the time when you built it. So it's pretty cool that it worked this long. What I would recommend is reach out to Eric with Radial Dynamics to echo what Tyler said. That guy is a genius, and he's a small business. So if you message them on IG or if you call the number, you get Eric, the owner, and he is happy to give you uh, input, information, whether you buy his products or not. The main things I would say is Tyler kept saying the low pressure line needs to be above the pump. I think what he's referring to is the feed line. So the biggest thing is when you mount your new reservoir, whichever reservoir you go with, it needs to be one AN line size bigger than your return line, and it needs to be mounted above the pump so that can gravity feed. Um, the next thing that I commonly see done wrong with Toyota setups, and this is a fault of PSD and Trail Gear both, which is that the high pressure line that goes from the pump to your steering box or orbital is probably dash six. That's the same size as lines that go to your hydraulic ram. That's okay. But your return line going from the um, the power steering box to your cooler and then back to the reservoir needs to be one size bigger than that. So that should be dash eight. And then your, like I said, your feed line should be dash 12 or dash 10, excuse me. Um, that will appropriately size everything to where you know you don't have restrictions. You have a higher flow rate pump. It really, with the system, if your steering is locking up, you're running out of flow, not pressure. Um, especially with hydraulic assist, it's a smaller ram than full hydro. But probably going to get cut off shortly. So thank you, guys. Love the podcast. Yeah, hope that helps. That definitely helps. Damn. Yeah. That was in deep. Yeah. I loved it. I never thought of the flow restrictions due to lines and... I mean, it makes complete sense, right? You got sure. you got a high pressure and a low pressure line coming through, and then your feed line needs to be able to feed all of that. It's like your house, right? right. Your water line, your main coming into your house needs to be a or, lot bigger than, or, or than, your air compressor, or your Mr. Air, Morflate, or your air compressor. <laughs> Talking um, about airflow lines yep. restrictions. Yep, your feed Schrader line needs valves. to be big enough to to get through all your restrictions. So yeah, 
That makes total sense. I've never applied that to steering before. <laughs> no, that, that's awesome. Great feedback. And, and what I absolutely hated is it sounds like I need to redo everything. I, I could think, maybe leave I think the ram bare minimum, and then everything else has got to go. I think bare minimum, your lines. I, I think now that he's mentioning it, 100%, I'm pretty sure all my lines are the same size except for that gravity feed line coming yeah. out of the bottom of the reservoir. And uh, the, uh, another thing about calling radial dynamics and getting Eric, 100%. I called radial dynamics to talk about their, their reservoir. Yeah. And he was more than happy to spend 15, 20 minutes talking to me. And I was like, okay, well, let me order your reservoir now. Like I want this yeah, reservoir. Yeah, yeah. And he goes, I don't have any in. I'm out of stock right now. And I was like, <laughs> dude, you sold me on this reservoir and I need one now though. And he goes, yeah, they're not going to be in for maybe I probably two months, three months out. I think oh, at the time. And I was yeah. like, uh, I need it. I, I, I'm going to have to go with somebody else. He goes, Hey, that's fine, man. He goes, that's cool. I don't, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm still my selling fault. stuff. It's my fault. Not your problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay, this dude's right. pretty awesome. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll definitely have to give him a call. Maybe we'll, uh, invite him onto the podcast, talk about flow cool. rates or power steering or different features of the, how the vehicle works and yeah. all that, which would probably be a great in-depth episode. It sounds like he knows his shit. So mm-hmm. that, that'd be fun. And then, yeah, we'll diagnose what's going on with mine. And uh, that was Austin, right? Austin in Washington. Austin, thank you very much for calling in and giving all that information. I'll, I'm pretty much just going to cut that out, save it. So when I do rebuild all that, I'm just going to listen to it again, all, <laughs> all over again. <laughs> yep. Uh, all right. So next one is our local Toyota fan. Oh, Donnie? Yeah. Sweet. Yay, Donnie. <laughs> Google put down here, hey, Jenny. And Tyler. Perfect. <laughs> We're role playing still. We're still role playing. <laughs> oh, man. All right. What does uh, Toyota Don got to say? Hello, Jenny and Tyler. Your man Rover Don here. Sorry to hear about Jenny's uh, shitty day here on uh, the last Thursday's episode. Uh, working in the yachting industry, I've had to deal with uh, similar issues just on a smaller scale. Uh, you know, more like in the, say, 20 gallon. True, range. it's in but, the yeah, septic it's tank. Fun. Uh, but actually, calling in regards to you were talking about uh, other countries or other applications, other people funding anti access legislation. I have no uh, personal proof of this, but my understanding is it's common for China to support any sort of environmental legislation that's anti-mining because they don't want us to go after our own rare earth minerals. They want to remain a monopoly on that. So they do this worldwide where they will step in and, you know, Billy doesn't want a mine because it will create too much road traffic around him. And he starts his little petition to be all NIMBY, uh, and he won't realize that some of his funding is actually coming from the hostile government, effectively. Anyway, again, I don't have any direct proof of that. This is just what I've been told. Uh, but yeah, a lot of uh, things that you may not ever even think about, you know, global uh, players working on a microscopic level, and for them, it's basically just a force multiplier. They can throw a couple of bucks at something and uh, make it look like it's coming internally. Uh, anyway, that's uh, all the uh, bright and cheery news I have for you today. Uh, have fun with uh, everything there. And, you know, uh, Toyota's, oh, yeah. Oh, also, I never realized Ozzy was such a classy guy. I'm glad uh, his wife is uh, okay. Uh, the Jeep, yeah, well, you know, it's a Jeep. But, uh, I, the fact that he reminded uh, reminded you that you're the sack ball, but that, that makes him an all right guy. We'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's it's interesting. It makes you think, right? You see, absolutely. You see different things happening around, and there's no proof that says other governments are really funding and getting involved, other than possibly SUA. There's there's pretty strong evidence that outside sources outside of the United States are funding heavily into SUA. But other outside of that, there's not, I mean, it just makes you think, right? Yeah. Little absolutely. coincidences here and there yeah. and patterns keep reappearing. It's like, man, yeah. I don't know. And it really want, makes you kind of do a, want to do a double check on a lot of things mm-hmm. on who do you, who are you supporting, where they're funding coming from. 
who's running the business, how's it ran, mm-hmm. you know, and it's one of the reasons that we, like, we enjoy Blue Ribbon Coalition. Yeah. Because uh, we know a lot about them. We know who's running it. We know that a lot of our funds are going into there, personal and f- through the, our businesses. And yeah, and it, it just uh, also reiterate some of the information that we talked about last week when we were, or maybe it was a week ago, looking into REI. You know, it's like we had, we've we known for a while that REI was working with Sierra Club, so we haven't been doing anything with them. But then I started doing a bunch of digging into REI and they are no longer supporting Sierra Club. So, mm-hmm. you know, just pick and choose your battles, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Here's this is another piece of feedback. A listener yep. got in contact with us with me through Instagram DMs, um, but it's in reference to episode four, uh, sorry, five forty three. Okay, where we were talking about trails being shut down or closed to vehicular access, and that just seems to be the big thing right now is that everyone's shooting towards hiking access only. But you and I have pointed out that yeah, it's okay. Hiking access only sounds great, but when the area you have to get to is a hundred miles out. You're not getting to it by hiking, right? But you have no way to get to it by vehicles. So you're not getting to it anymore. <laughs> Absolutely. hundred percent. It's effectively yep. closing out the area. Yep. Right. Uh huh. Anyways, he said, you guys are definitely in the middle of having your land stolen by elites. I watched it here. Make access to only hikers. Hikers don't go reduce funding for maintenance. No one goes government after X amount of years of no use can sell it off. Wow. And I said, well, fuck, where'd that happen at? Where's here? Yeah, where is I'm he? I'm like, is where he in another you? country? Yeah, what, what's going on here? He's in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Oh. So he's in the United States, East yep. Coast. Mm-hmm. He said, for example, the state forest used to be OHRV in the early 90s. Then they put a stop to it. Tons of EP out there. I'm not sure what that is. They made it equestrian only access. So they took away the, the OHRV and made it equestrian only. The equestrians didn't use it. So eventually the state forest sold the land to a Cisco plant. Interesting. Now they lease uh, like 20 square miles of the forest. Another section they leased to an electric company so they could be paid with the town's dollars to put up like nine windmills uh, at three costs to what they are out West. They failed to produce and are currently being dismantled. The windmills. (laughs) This all went down between 96 and 04. That's pretty much the case with all Massachusetts town forests shrinking. If you look at archived maps from 1990, all the preserved land is gone or shrunk beyond belief. Yeah, it sucks. So it's it's interesting. You just see patterns reoccurring. Yeah, and it makes you go, "Hold on, wait a minute." It's (laughs) what's really going on here. How history is so boring in school, Mm -hmm. and then how it's actually so important. Yeah. In life. Right. Yeah. So anyways, thank you, Don, for calling in, bring that up. Thank you, Josh, for DMing me that example of that. This kind of pattern happened in Massachusetts throughout the nineties. Just keep your head on a swivel, everybody, and really support those companies that are fighting these recurring patterns happening over and over and over again. Yeah. So, and my two cents is just don't forget, right? Yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't forget about what happened, you know, in the nineties and be like, Oh, something's happening today. And we like, this happened in the nineties. It's the same thing. We're just going through it again. So how did we deal with it then? Now that's what we need to do now or improve upon that. And you know, we, this is going to be a battle that we're always going to have to fight Yep. and they're going to be bring new attacks at us. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to come up with new defenses, but it's the same old battle. It's the same thing. Yep. Yep. Exactly. All right. Uh, next one is from Nick De Lusa. Sounds about right. That's about right. Did, did I, I get that so. right? All right. I think he has a gladiator or something. Yeah. Maybe uh, on 27s now. We'll find out. Maybe, uh, it might be 21s. Oh, let's see what he says. Hey, Jimmy and Tyler. It's Nick Gladiator on. I forget what you guys have downgraded me to now it's on 21s or something. Uh, I'm listening to the October 4th snail mail podcast and uh you guys are talking about kelly's rollover uh, and the fact that she had aftermarket axles and whether or not her abs traction control would have all worked uh with the ultimate dana 60s and i can tell you because i have the ultimate dana 60s on a jt which is essentially the same thing as a jl that they're bolt-on axles and all of the factory sensors are retained 
so there's no difference. The, the truck doesn't know you're running aftermarket axles. It performs as if it would uh, with the stock 44s. So I just thought you guys might want that update. I uh, hope you guys are doing well, and uh, I look forward to the Rebel podcast, although I imagine you'll listen to this after that. So hope you guys are having a good week. That Nick De Lusa guy is pretty smart, man. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Glad you're here in 21s. Glad to hear it. We can upgrade him back to 22s after that one. That was a good, yeah, one. That that was was a good a call. Good call. Yeah. 22s now, Nick. <laughs> well, anyways, uh, good information also about the, the axles and how that works. Um, yep. I mean, I've never used those axles, so I didn't, I was unsure or I never owned a Jeep. I've driven a Jeep now, but I've never owned a Jeep. You parked some guy's Jeep in a Safeway parking lot or a Rayleigh's or whatever that was. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) He didn't like that. He did not like it. Um, Yeah. That was funny. (laughs) Well, I had the Cherokee. The actual very first vehicle that I drove around was the Cherokee. That's funny. But yeah, that one, we drove it. I drove it for a little bit before I turned it in for my family, turned it in for a Lemon Law Jeep and Jimmy. (laughs) <laughs> I know. Anyways, uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not even, I don't know what sensors are on, uh, inside of a Jeep. So I don't know if it has like slit skid mm-hmm. correction built into it or anything, but, um, there's a sensor inside a Jeep. So there's an actual, um, a light that pops up on your dashboard. <laughs> I can't say the straight face <laughs> that tells you when your, uh, latte machine is not working anymore. Got it. So okay. when you need to upgrade your factory latte machine too, yeah. there's a, a light on the dashboard that tells okay. you that. So. But that, so what the Tacoma does, mm-hmm. since it doesn't have a latte light, oh, that's it, bummer. Um, if you lose control and your vehicle starts to slide, it knows which brake to apply mm-hmm. to straighten you out. Yeah. Which is nuts. And I've learned how to override <laughs> that because uh-huh. <laughs> sometimes, no sometimes I want to lose control. Uh-huh. But yeah, I don't know if the Jeep has that or not. But and I, and to be honest, I, I fully trust Kelly as a driver. Yeah. And um not sure if it would have helped or not in the situation that she was in. I mean, you and I have driven on those roads around and outside of St. George and they're they're narrow roads, not that much shoulder on them. Sure. So it's very easy to slip a tire off, especially if you're oh. running much wider axles on 100%. a vehicle. So I totaled a Toyota Camry because I went <laughs> over air quotes here, over the white line. Oh uh, yeah. And it caught that tire and threw me into a ditch. Yeah. Granted, where I went over that line, the road had <laughs> eroded to the point where there was no white line. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And the, and it was literally, and you know where I live, it was literally like 100 yards down my road, yeah. down the main road, and the ditch is like four feet deep there. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, yeah. it totaled at, 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 I don't know when I did it, in the early 2000s. And you were only doing 94 miles an hour, so... No, <laughs> I was probably doing 25, 30 because uh-huh. I was literally pulling out of uh, the side road and maybe I was going 35 or something, but yeah, it just threw me into the ditch. So I fully get it. Like once it's, you know, once the car gr- gets or loses traction, things mm-hmm. change immediately. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, but we're happy. Kelly's okay. Yes. Kelly's she is doing okay. Good. So she, it's, it really is very impressive what, the Jeep did to preserve her mm-hmm. in that violent of a rollover. Yeah. So <laughs> I do unfortunately have to say it didn't knock any sense into her though. She's still with Ozzy. Yeah. And, and they're looking at getting another Jeep. They're looking at getting yeah. a 392 now or something. Yeah. So, yeah, so I was hoping whatever. he would hit her. She'd be like, yeah, Ozzy's not a good choice. I got to move on. And uh, you know what? Toyotas don't suck. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Uh, thank you, Nick, for calling in. Yeah. Uh, next one is Zach from Oakley homie. Hey Zach. Haven't heard yeah. you in a while. Yeah, it's been a few weeks. I, know. I was we wondering if you're still alive. <laughs> Did he get his biking marathon done? We'll see. Yeah. What's up Jimmy and Tyler? Zach from Oklahoma. We just had, uh, our coffee and cars for OKC and there are some pretty cool cars there. One in particular, it was a sec- second gen forerunner that has been Various modifications. It's propane powered on 42s. There's some, I think, Chevy parts on it, some other brands. Uh, the back end is was chopped because it was in a rollover. And so he just like chopped it. He put a first gen roll bar in the back of it. And the thing's pretty sick. He like, he takes it around Oklahoma for all the places where we got rock crawling, like Disney, Oklahoma. 
He's even taken it out for King of the Hammers and did Chocolate Thunder, which I thought was pretty sick. Well, yeah, no, I figured I'd just tell tell you all about this rig. I'll also send some photos here shortly. But I, he didn't. He said he didn't listen to the Snail Trail podcast. I was like, yo, you should listen to the Snail Trail podcast. So hopefully I've got a new listener coming up here soon. So uh, Pete, if you hear this, that shout out for you. But y'all, y'all keep crawling. Have a good day. I'm gonna figure out what I'm doing with the rest of the day. I don't know. I got another video game. It's a horror game called Little Nightmares 2. Playing it for October because why not? Spooky season. All right, y- y'all have a good weekend. Catch y'all later. Nice. Number one fan. Who? Pete. Zach. Zach. Yeah. That sound. I would accept that. He's yeah. a cool dude. Yep. But that rig sounded pretty neat too. Yeah. Yeah, second gen right up your alley. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would. Uh, he, that chop means he top. can be hired at More Flight now. That's true. <laughs> what was it, Pete? Come get a job. Yeah. <laughs> More Flight's hiring only second gen forerunner owners. That's true. If it's I ever true. need a job, I'm going to have to buy one off Ryan or something like that. He just got another one for like 200 bucks. I know. So. <laughs> I'm just, if I just buy a, the cab, yeah. does that make me a second gen forerunner owner? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what Jeep people do. Yeah, that's true. Jeeples. Yeah. Ryan, I might need to buy a cab from you. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing else. I don't, I'll even let you, I just want a bear cab. There you go. Yeah. Uh, I'll take the body mounts off your cab. Um, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounds cool. Uh, a propane. So did he do, does he have the 3.0 engine in there? Probably 22 RE. Do you think 22 RE? Yeah. That's the that easy one for the propane. Typically to propane yeah. swap. Yeah. That makes sense. All right. We also had an offer from a listener to get a third gen forerunner for fifteen hundred dollars mm-hmm. and build it and raffle off tickets and donate them or something, do something we wanted with them. And I was like, I would absolutely love to do that. I just don't have the time. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it would be it sounds a, like a really cool fun project. It would. I wonder how that all could work, but the, there's a weird legality about raffling off a vehicle or selling tickets yeah. for that in California specifically. Well, uh, we just, we sell tickets for t-shirts. Yeah. That's really what it comes Is down to. Is that how you do it? Yeah. You have to then, give them something. Everybody has to win something. Yeah. They have to get something. Everybody has to win something. Yeah. They got to get something for their, their purchase. Something tangible, I think right. is what it is. So Yeah. Cool. Well, maybe we'll think about it. Um, we may get in contact with that person. I think it'd be fun to do. Yeah. Do some uh, four wheel underground cantilever on the back. That'd be rad. Dude. If uh, Brian wanted to donate something towards it and then donate all the funds, the profits somewhere. So, yes. Uh, all right. Uh, next one up is from Mr. Clinkenbeard Strong. Nice. Uh, what's he got going on today? Something about 44s and 9 inch? Perfect. I like it. Sweet. Hey, guys. It's Tom with Clinkenbeard Strong. Uh, I got a couple things to say. One, I will run my 44. Thank you very much, Tyler. And I will be happy with it. <laughs> Until I decide I want to drop the money on a nine inch and then it's going to get a nine inch steer axle. But anyway, I wanted to call because I had a public service announcement. PSA. I was going through checking for a noise on my wife's Tacoma that I put a lift kit on about six years ago. And it made me remember that even though the lift kits only tell you to do a nut and bolt check. I think at like the first six month mark or maybe it's thousand mile mark or something like that. It's a good, uh, good reminder to, um, go back through maybe like once a year or every so often, every so many miles and do a nut and bolt check when you have that many aftermarket components on your suspension. Um, but yeah, just wanted to bring that up. And then also I wanted to ask you guys a question because it seems at least from the outside, that both of you are semi-successful business owners. And I was wondering if you could go through kind of the steps that you took to move out away from like a career where you were being paid by someone into being a business owner, like what precautions you took and um, whatnot. Anyway, uh, enjoying the content and we will talk with you guys later. 
We fooled another one, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm here successful. <laughs> oh, uh, man. What was the, let's go to the first part first. What was the, he's going to run his 44 until he makes a nine inch steer, steer axle. axle. And then there was something else. Wasn't there? No, nothing else after that. That was it. No, uh, but, 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 but uh, the PSA on nut and bolt That's checks. It. Yeah. yeah. Great suggestion. Mm-hmm. You made me think that I should check my vehicle because I did do a uh, two and a half inch lift on that my Tacoma, mm-hmm. and um, I you, when you were saying that I just started running through all the <laughs> bolts and nuts that are a part of that, and I'm like, oh shit, maybe there is something loose. Yep. And uh, but that is a fantastic uh, advice, you know, even on your daily driver that's just seen you know the road and maybe a few potholes, you know things can go loose. So yeah, definitely you know keep a lookout or keep an ear out or keep keep your butt out. Uh, you know, <laughs> the butt dinos are an important dino it sometimes, is, yeah. you know, if something doesn't feel right, you know, for then sure. you should be checking things out. As for business, uh, I think Tyler has a, a completely different story than what I have, which could be fun. And I think this literally could be a podcast. Like it I might be interesting be episode, to have Tom yeah. on and have him like interview us <laughs> in a way. Um, yeah. my gist is I was a graphic designer, uh, for a medical device company. I got bored at that company and started a snail trail four by four because I wanted to have a creative outlet because what I was doing graphic design for the medical device company wasn't, uh, helping me learn or wasn't giving me, um, any challenges or letting me grow. Uh, from there, snail trail four by four did fairly well. And I actually got, um, approached by an off-road industry company. Um, that's, I shall re- rename nameless. Yeah. And, um, uh, every, every, the interview and everything went great. And then once I started, uh, I took a pay cut to go work there. And, um, once I started working there, the boss and I just really didn't see eye to eye. There was a, um, without going into too much detail, just things happened there that weren't talked about in the interview. And or things that were talked about in the interview were not held weren't, to weren't agreement. Uh, to agreement, true. <laughs> and uh, within a month, pretty much, I got let go. Yeah. And uh, at that point, I said, well, you know, I was only spending so long on snail trail 4x4. Four four. Uh, you know, let's just say four or five hours a week on snail trail 4x4, four four, maybe 10 hours a week on snail trail 4x4 four four YouTube channel. Maybe if I spent the next, an additional 30 hours a week, you know, spending a full 40 hour work week, I will increase threefold. And that wasn't true. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Uh, And in the meantime, I, you know, um, we started the podcast right about that time. mm -hmm. uh, And there was a a few other things happening that was able to save me from having to go back to getting a day job. And then COVID hit and that definitely screwed things up. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But then, yeah, during COVID I started snail armor and it out of just a, like Tyler, a thing that I wanted that wasn't out on the market or actually that uh, hindsight, there was one out on the market, but they did not do their very good at marketing on their side. Mm-hmm. Um, and cause I, so, you never found cause it. Cause I never yeah. found it. Cause I did my due diligence. I would yep. have bought it and not started a company <laughs> yeah. if there was one out on the market. Yep. Uh, so, and then, yeah. And here we are today, uh, doing that. So mine was out of necessity. Uh, Mm -hmm. because I got let go from a company and then COVID hit, um, almost around that same time when I got let go, I started collecting some unemployment and that carried me right into COVID. And right as COVID was starting, my unemployment ran out and I couldn't get a job. Yeah. There was no, like you, there's nobody's interviewing, nobody's taking jobs. There's maybe some digital stuff, but I was, um, I was gung ho to try to make it myself and there might be a level of stubbornness there that, yeah. uh, um, is good or bad, uh, could on each, each end of that scale. Yep. Uh, but I think that's, uh, that's mainly my story for that. Yeah. I'm, uh, I have a long story and I often think about this cause, um, how, you know, I try and think back to how did I end up starting this business and getting into it and really seeing it through and getting to the point where I can hire employees, provide paychecks for them, have really awesome benefits, pay above average salaries. Um, all this different stuff by the time I was, let me see, I'm 36 now. So that would have put me around 32. Yeah. 31. Have you been doing all that? 
Well, when you started Morflate? When I started Morflate and then employees yeah, it was about came. five years. Yeah. And so employees came when I was 32 or 33, I guess. It's maybe your first one. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I don't know. I always, I often think back, I'm like, yeah, you're, you're, you, you always have these culmination of life events that mm-hmm. lead you to where you are today. Um, and really honestly, I think the biggest thing that contributes to where I'm at today is a very specific mindset of a being adaptable. So, um, being able to adapt and adjust on the fly for whatever's sure. thrown at you. Sure. <laughs> and B combining that with, um, if you want something done, just go fucking do it. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, that's something I've noticed that I've been doing since I was 11 or 12. Um, and I didn't really notice it at the time, but I look back on, um, my big gaming years where I was, uh, I was into competitive gaming before esports was a thing. Sure. Um, I look back on it now and I'm like, man, if I was just into competitive gaming or held out for another four or five years, I could have got into esports. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, th- looking back to then I created a, uh, a, a, a month long, multi month long tournaments for Starcraft. Um, and they ended because I was like, I want to compete. I yes. want, I want to be able to compete against other people. Sure. Um, and there wasn't really a good way to do that. It was Starcraft one. There's no ladders. There's nothing like that. Um, especially for the map that I played in and that ended up staying around for almost 20 years that this league that I had created, um, back when I was, I think 13 or 14 when I created that. Um, and then when I got into MMORPGs, world of Warcraft, um, I created, um, a specific, uh, raid, that I put together because I was like, I want to see a raid done this way. Nobody was really doing it that way. And so I was like, fuck it, I'll do it. Yeah. Um, and so just having that mentality, I keep finding myself in positions of, I think this is a good idea. It should be done. Nobody else is really doing it. So right. fucking do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so being able to take that mindset along with being adaptable, um, being able to adapt on the fly to be able to achieve what you're trying to do. Um, I think is the two things that has really gotten me to where I am today. Yeah. So yeah. what, um, I want to, I'm going to continue this for just a second. What was the point that you decided to leave Wilson? Like, how did you make that make decision? That transition? How did, when did you know that it was, uh, allowed or okay? Yeah. Um, and, and how did that come to fruition? Um, ultimately it came to the point where I couldn't do both jobs myself. I was working more than 60 hours a week to do more flight and Wilson. Um, and I, and work was suffering on both ends. I was falling behind on emails, falling behind on orders from Morflate, and I was, my sales numbers were dropping with Wilson. And so I was like, this is getting to a point where I'm stretched too thin now. I can't do it. Right. Um, and I was getting called out on Wilson, and I was getting angry customers on Morflate. And so finally, I sat down with the wife and said, I can't do both anymore. I have to do one or the other. Right. Um, and, um, it came to the, the point of do more flight instead of Wilson. Yeah. So, okay. So it wasn't like a financial status, like I'm making this much money on more flight. I can, I no. no longer need to be working Wilson or. I that. mean, there was a little bit of that too. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit lucky also a little bit. This is kind of just what I look for in partners. Um, my wife has a good job. She is very self-sustained. Um, and so, um, if like we, I should have, I should have left Wilson a lot earlier. I, yes. To I think about I a told year you earlier. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, but we, because, uh, money is a very big concerning thing for her being self-sustained. Um, she didn't want me to. And I, I went along with it, um, until the point where I was like, Hey, look, we're kind of paying all the bills with more flight stuff right now. And now both Wilson and Morflate are suffering. I think it's time that I need to do this. Um, And she agreed. So it wasn't necessarily that we hit a certain point with money, but that definitely had an impact where I could prove to her that because she, she's the kind of person that is an employee for sure. Okay. She will never go in as much as I try and tell her she needs to, because she totally is capable of it. Go and start her own consulting firm in the field that she works in. Um, she'll never do it because she doesn't understand how to, 
uh, make a self-sustained, profitable company? How okay. do you make more money than you're spending? Right. Yes. Um, and I that's, uh, apparently that's a hard part for a lot of companies. Exactly. Right. Um, there's a lot of companies out there that are like, I have this great idea. I want to do it. And they're like, awesome, do it. But taking that idea from uh, a tangible, turning it into a tangible item and then making it into a, something based around it that makes more money than it spends. That's a huge leap. Yes. Um, and so that's, then that's definitely something that's not for everybody. Yeah. It takes a lot of self-control and it takes a lot of extra hours. Jimmy and I joke around about it a lot of times where um, people who are entrepreneurs are the only idiots stupid enough to leave a nine to five job for a 24 seven job. Yeah. I, I'd say <laughs> I, I left my nine to five to work five to nine. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, exactly. So um, it's definitely not for everybody. Um, but if it's something that you feel like you want to try, I love like one of the things that gives me enjoyment is helping people figure out the business analytics side of stuff. Yeah. Um, so reach out to me. Um, I know there's been a couple people I've, I've helped talk through some things. Sure. Absolutely. Um, it it is a very fun process to discuss. A Mm -hmm. lot of it is, you know, just like we've said on the podcast many times, we love spending other people's money. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, that's sort of that direction, but yeah, Tom, if this is something you're thinking about or considering, uh, hit us up, um, or hit us up one of the, either one to talk about it. And if you do want to dive deeper into this, I do think this would be a fun podcast episode, maybe a yeah. bonus episode of some sort. Yeah. Um, you know, without giving too much of the, our, uh, monetary, uh, information out, but I think the information of how to do these things, you know, in percentages is definitely, um, a, a value to a lot of people out there. Uh, one of the things that I told Tyler when he, I know he was struggling and I don't know if he listened to me or he did my advice <laughs> or any of it, but, uh, somewhere I learned uh, a while ago and I've seen in a lot of entrepreneur podcasts or uh, small business podcasts that I listen to is once your side hustle equals the value that your day job is doing, stop working your day job and start working your side hustle because then you can just dedicate more time and everything into your own business Mm -hmm. and growing that. Um, and that's a buffer for a lot of people because they're like, I was making, you know, $80,000 a year at this one job. And now I'm making $80,000 a year on both jobs, which is a fantastic, you know, making 160,000. But if you leave your day job, you're going to drop down that 80,000. You're going to survive the way you used to, and you're going to have to downgrade your life like that, like you just mm-hmm. lost eighty thousand dollars. Yep. Uh, but in my my opinion and the what I've seen and heard is that it will quickly jump um leaps and bounds on your own business because now you'll be able to dedicate everything to it. Yeah. It's uh, being an employee is great because you don't have the headaches of business. Yeah. I've I have that meme of what it's like to own a business and it's a kid shooting himself in the dick with a nerf gun. <laughs> yes. And then crying. I keep that on, on like my, my favorites to post to people, um, especially our manager chat, but, uh, it's, uh, it, there's a ton of headaches with it. So being an employee is uh, kind of nice. You work nine to five. And if you have a good employer, you don't really, you shouldn't be working outside of those hours. No. If you're working outside of those hours, then you have too much on your plate or you're not good at your job. Um, yeah. Uh, and so uh, as an employee, you can check out at the end of the day. And you can spend time with your family and you can really enjoy that time and go on vacation, use your vacation time and, and do all that stuff. As an employer, you don't get those luxuries. You're always on call as an owner operator until you get to a, a, a specific size, but it takes a long, I would say it takes three to five years of really grinding it out to start getting to that point where you, where well, things are a little bit more mon- automated and it's more of a machine yeah. than you being involved in every little thing. Um, but as an owner operator, you, it's you, you're giving up your employee day job for a more scalable income and you're now more in tr- control of your own destiny. So as an employee, you're also, you can give ideas to your managers, your boss, the owner of the company, and they may shut them down and you get frustrated about that. Right. Cause you feel like you're not being heard. And then something happens. You're like, man, if we only fucking did X, like I said, six months ago, this all would have worked out and yep. you're not, you, you don't, you don't get to do that as an employee. I mean, that's what happens as an employee, yeah, right? That is what happens. Um, but as an owner, you get to make those decisions. You need to go for them. 
and you, you know, get to you be you're in control of your own destiny. And to me, that's a super valuable thing that um, on top of say the eighty thousand dollars a year of income is that's another benefit to the job work lifestyle. Yeah. And I don't want to, I don't want to continue this because I think this, I mean, I really <laughs> do could, think this would be a cool podcast. We could go a long but time the, on this. We could go a very long time on this, but I think that there's also a major benefit in de, um, deductions on your taxes. Uh, yeah, just 100%. <laughs> yep. I, I honestly yeah. think everybody, everybody should start a solo business of some sort because in your any in your hobby. Yeah. Right. Because then you will be able to write off your expenditures for your hobby. Yep. And it's, it's an amazing thing. And Our tax code is so fucked. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, it's really eye opening. Once you start getting into business and commercial taxes, it's amazing as to how easy it is to decrease your income. So you're not paying taxes. Yes. <laughs> It really is amazing. I mean, there's, there's that, that thing going around that everyone's complaining that Trump doesn't pay taxes. It's because the tax code allows him to not do that. It's not on him. He's following the law. Yeah. <laughs> so he's, it's he's doing everything he needs to do uh -huh. to get by. Yep. Yep. And, uh, so is Tyler and I, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're, so. we're not breaking the law. No, nope. we're not fudging the rules. Nope. But I don't, I had to pay taxes because my wife made money. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so anyways, uh, uh, there's a lot of benefits to owning your own business. There's a lot of drawbacks, but yeah. in my opinion, the benefits outweigh the drawbacks. Yes. Um, but Even, I'm also, I have a very, you and I have, a, I think very, I don't want to say very different personalities, but um, we have different personalities from pers different personalities yeah. out there. So. Yeah. yeah. And the thing I just continuing a little bit more Here we go. Uh, yeah. just in regards <laughs> to the taxes. I'm just going to say like, it doesn't have to be anything special. I just mm -hmm. started, you know, if you, if you really enjoy off-roading and four by four, and I believe uh, Tom already does a YouTube channel, start a business around that, right? If you haven't already start a solo, a uh, sole prop, run a business with it. Almost everything you buy will be a tax write-off that you're going to show or talk about on your YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. You know, you might not make any money and eventually the government will slap your hand and go, this isn't a business. It's a hobby. Mm -hmm. You are no, you no longer qualify to have a business. And then you go, shit. All right. Well, I'm just going to fun three to five years. Yeah. I'm <laughs> going to start a new business <laughs> called <laughs> snail trail two by four. <laughs> and <laughs> where you nail wood up on a wall, <laughs> nail wood up on a wall or I only build two wheel drive trucks or whatever, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and then yep. do it all over again. Yep. Yeah. Um, but there, yeah, we could dive into a lot of questions, a lot of answers. We've been dealing with business on our, each other's sides. I have, I have a graphic design business that is over, I think it's around 12 years in business. Yeah. You know, I've, I've kept every single business license that I've gotten from my <laughs> County. I have like this thick stack of them. Nice. Uh, and you know, and, and that's a whole different market and yep. it's a different way of, you know, different way of doing things. So mm -hmm. we have a lot of, uh, um, knowledge in these kind of areas and experience, I guess, semi experience. Yeah. I mean, I would say Tyler has much more because, uh, he's has a different level of experience than what I kind of have, yeah. uh, you know, cause his goes from soul prop to, uh, you know, hiring employees to international now and corporations and yeah. international Co stuff. Yeah. yeah. Where, you know, I'm still a soul solopreneur in a yeah. way, but, um, yeah, Tom, if you want to dive into this, we, I think we'd both be happy to help. Mm -hmm. one way or another. And, um, if you guys want to hear this as a podcast, uh, or some other information, um, we could do that. Maybe we'll Tyler and I will off air. We'll talk about like maybe making a questionnaire or, yeah. um, finding another person in the industry that is as a good business that might have some, uh, questions, uh, to poke at us and yeah. maybe we'll figure that out. I think that's the big problem is you and I don't really know what people want to know Yeah, about that part. Right. Yeah. Um, sure. Uh, yeah. So I, if there's specific questions you guys have, send them in and we can definitely do a whole episode on it. Um, but I don't, I don't want it to end up just being rambling kind of like this has turned into Yeah, <laughs> uh, for a full episode for you guys uh, that might get boring. So I want you guys to actually have some information that you can garnish and either find super entertaining or, um, get some a learning experience out of or something. So, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I don't know. Um, let us know. I just, I just don't know what you guys want to know about that. Cause there's 
so many different ways to talk about owning a business. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the different sides of that dice. Um, so it could, it could go on forever and I don't want it to necessarily ramble on. So, yeah. Um, I let's just, let's put a pin in it there. Uh, let's, um, I let don't Tom, if you have a question for us directly, hit us up. Yep. Everybody else, let me, let's Tyler and I figure out how we might want to move forward with this and see if, uh, people are interested in, um, contacting us, wh- whatever way we feel. And on uh, Monday's episode or maybe next Thursday's episode, cause Monday's a special episode. Um, we'll talk about it. We'll circle back and we'll, um, let you guys know what, how we want to move forward. Cool. Sounds good to me. All right. That does it for snail mail today. Uh, thanks everybody for coming along and, uh, calling in and chatting with us. Uh, we love talking with you guys. So definitely call in, leave us a voicemail, leave us some feedback. Uh, as you saw today, any question is up on the board for us to answer whether it's off-roading related or not. We'll, uh, do our best to answer it or dive into it or see if it's a fun little tangent rabbit hole that can be spun off into another episode. So, um, it's all a lot of fun. We love it. 916-345-4744 is the voicemail number. Um, call them some voicemail. Yeah. You can also hit us up on Instagram, snail trail four by four or four by four Toyota Tyler, or email us Jimmy or Tyler at snail trail four by four.com. I like it. I like it a lot. And uh, I guess that does it, man. Out. We, <laughs> Number you have called has been disconnected.